the sun is shining, a gentle breeze blows, and to our human eye, all appears peaceful. But dip below into the undergrowth, and a life and death struggle between predator and prey is playing out. A hornworm caterpillar attacks the tomato stem. The plant provides the caterpillar with the food and sustenance it needs for its growth and survival. Not so far away, insect thrips also chew on a brassica plant, while aphids march up and down a flower stalk, piercing the stem with their mouthparts to feed on the sugar-rich fluids located inside the plant. These insects, caterpillars, thrips, aphids and other herbivores, have the capability to cause large-scale damage to plants if left to feed unchecked. Life for the plant may at first seem cruel, but plants are not totally helpless. Millions of years of evolution have armed them with a sophisticated pool of defensive weapons. These weapons can be structural, such as thorns and spines, which can defend against larger herbivores, or these weapons may be chemical. A pine tree, for example, producing a sticky sap. In part, this sap is to deter, immobilize, or even kill invading insects such as bark beetles, plugging the holes the beetles create as they bore into the tree, while toxic chemicals in the sap interfere with digestion in the beetle gut. Other plants produce a special milky latex composed of a battalion of different chemicals and proteins to ward off potential insect predators. Meanwhile, specialized glandular hairs on many plants provide a further chemical and structural line of defense. Here, these aphids navigate a minefield of microscopic hairs on the stem of a sow thistle. These hairs in most plant species produce in their ball-like tips a sticky, poisonous barrage of defensive chemicals. The aphids move carefully along the stem. These thrips, however, aren't so fortunate. Trapped by sticky chemicals secreted by glandular hairs on a tobacco leaf, they become glued to the leaf and either drown in the secretions or slowly starve to death. In addition, plants can actively respond to wounding and touch signals from insect herbivores, such as this thrip damage, to mount a defensive response, increasing the production of defensive chemicals or altering the development of defensive structures. Again, our hornworm caterpillar feasts on its prey. Signals caused by the insect, such as mechanical damage, are turned into a molecular signal in the plant, which propagates through the leaves to notify the plant to mount a defence response. And scientists over many years working on plant defence have uncovered the nature of this molecular signal. It's calcium. Yes, calcium. The same chemical element that you ingest with your slice of cheese or eat with your bowl of breakfast cereal and milk. In plants, as it can in animals, calcium plays an important role as a chemical messenger. When the leaf detects an insect predator, calcium moves between special compartments in plant cells. This is the signal the plant needs to fight back against insect herbivores and mount a defense response. It helps to think about an American football team under attack. The snap of the ball is like a calcium signal that the attack has begun, and the defending team mounts a response to stop the offensive play. But not all glandular hairs are for defense. And not all plants are prey to insects. No, sometimes it is the insect that is a meal for a predator plant. The sundew, like other carnivorous plants, grows in nutrient-poor soils and as a consequence has evolved a remarkable ability to sense, capture and digest animals for nourishment. On these plants, the glandular hairs no longer serve for defence as they do in other plants, but rather for attack. And at their tip, they secrete a sticky drop of glue. Perhaps attracted by the sparkle of this glue in the sun, or the brilliant red colour of the hairs, or even, perhaps, fragrant perfumes released by the plant, an insect lands on the leaf 
and sticks to the glue. There, helpless, the plant uses these same hairs to recognise the mechanical thrashing of the animal to further complete its attack. The leaf curls over the insect, secreting more glue and digestive juices, drowning the animal and consuming the nutrients through an open stomach. Charles Darwin, the great 19th century evolutionary biologist, observed that the sundew could sense the lightest touch, the fragment of a hair weighing one eighty thousandth of a gram, and wrote that hardly any more remarkable fact than this has been observed in the vegetable kingdom. But how does the sundew leaf respond to prey at the molecular level? Scientists have proposed that some plant carnivores have evolved the ability to sense and respond to insects by taking the insect defense response pathways and systems seen in non-carnivorous plants and putting them towards attack. This would include using calcium as a molecular signal. We return to our game of American football. Like a calcium signal, the ball is snapped, signaling the start of play. But now what was the same defensive line has evolved into an unexpected attack, much like in a carnivorous sundew plant. This was the idea that researchers at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in California and Washington University in St. Louis set out to test. Could calcium, which normally acts as a defense signal, be utilized in these carnivorous plants not for defense, but rather insect attack? To test this idea, Salk scientists genetically modified the DNA of sundews using advanced growing and genetic manipulation techniques. These plants are modified in such a way to glow green when calcium moves from one compartment in a plant cell to another, indicating the movement of calcium. High-powered microscopes at the Salk and Washington University were then used to image how the plants glow in response to insect capture, and thus how calcium changes. A fruit fly trapped on a sundew leaf causes changes in compartmental calcium signals in the glandular hairs. Brief spikes of glowing green fluorescence move down the hairs as the insect touches them, gradually subsiding over time. Circular waves of calcium move outwards from the base of the hairs, like expanding circular ripples when an object makes a splash in water. These calcium waves might excite other neighbouring hairs. These calcium signals are caused by the touch of the thrashing insect. A simple poke here with a glass rod and the same calcium response can be detected. The response to touch can be small and localised to just a few glandular hairs lightly touched, or can appear as large, propagating waves throughout the plant when it is harshly touched or wounded. Somehow, the plant integrates this complex molecular information and different calcium signals to mount an appropriate response. And for a helpless fly, this calcium response triggers leaf movement and the secretion of an acidic cocktail of digestive enzymes. And so the fly becomes a meal for the hungry plant. And so it seems that carnivorous plants share something in common with non-carnivorous plants when responding to insects. They both employ the same molecular calcium signal. This work from Salk and Washington University strengthens the notion that carnivory evolved in some plants from pre-existing insect defense pathways, and suggests that the study of botanical carnivory might also just tell us something about how plants more generally can sense and interact with animals in their environment. Indeed, it seems that for a carnivorous sundew plant, the best offense evolved from a good defense. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. 
the ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask. We don't bite, but our plants do.